How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here and in this video I'm bringing you the Modern Warfare 3 Beta Best Settings Guide. In this video we'll be covering all of the best settings you need to be making use of in Modern Warfare 3 to get the absolute best FPS, lowest input latency and fix some of the visual clutter for the overall best experience possible as quickly as possible. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel to stay tuned for the Modern Warfare 3 Full Launch Ultimate FPS Increase Guide which will be available when the game comes out and the Ultimate FPS Increase Guide for Warzone 3 the moment it goes live. With all that said and done, let's get straight into the video. This video is going to focus on the absolute best settings and optimizations you need to be making use of in the Modern Warfare 3 beta, regardless of how old, new, high-end, low-end your system is, whether you're on AMD, Intel, or Nvidia. Jumping straight into the guide, before we do anything, we're first of all going to be making sure that we're utilizing the brand new GPU drivers. These are specific for Modern Warfare 3 and have been released by both Nvidia and AMD. These are especially important because they do enable some new functionality with inside of Modern Warfare 3, alongside the correct reflex profile for the game. For those of you on Nvidia GPUs, head to this URL at the top. Once inside of here, select the automatic driver updates utility, or alternatively, you can navigate down to product type, input your information with inside of here, select start search. At the top of the driver results list, download the latest driver available for your GPU, follow the on-screen prompts once finished downloading, and install it to your system. As always, if you are serious about optimizing your PC and wish to get the best FPS possible and lowest latency, it is highly recommended to further customize and de-bloat that driver yourself, utilizing the links in the description down below. Next up, we're quickly going to be removing all of the excess rubbish from the installation that we don't need to free up some space and remove clutter. If you're on the Steam version of the game, head inside of Steam, head over to Call of Duty on the left hand side, right click, navigate to properties, go to the DLC section, and this is where you can then begin to unselect all of the parts of the game you don't need installed to play the beta. So if Warzone's installed and you're not playing Warzone or Modern Warfare 2 or older versions of the game, you can unselect any versions you would like to remove if you're no longer playing them. Once they've been unselected, exit out, you'll then have an update for your game, and that's just a quick and easy way to free up some drive space and declutter the game. Just bear in mind that you will need the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 option selected with inside of it, and if standard pack 1 is also available, choose that too. With all that set up and out of the way, we can jump straight into the in-game settings. When applying changes to the in-game settings, I would recommend that you boot into a game and leave it running in the background so you can see in a live instance the changes we're making and to see if you're happy with them or not, where you can then make some slight adjustments. Either way, whether you're doing this from the main menu or the game menu, take yourself up to the top right hand side, press the settings icon, and we can start by navigating down to graphics. Display mode should be set to full screen exclusive, but if you do run into issues utilizing multiple monitors or tabbing in and out or streaming, try going with full screen borderless. Ensure that your best GPU has been selected from the display adapter, that your screen refresh rate is set to the highest possible number. Display resolution is also recommended to have set to your monitor's native resolution, whether that be 1080p, 1440 or 4K. Aspect ratio should be left at automatic. VSync should be switched off. Custom frame rate, we're going to be setting this to unlimited for now, but later on in the video, once the game is fully optimized, I'll be showcasing you how to set up a proper FPS cap for the best results. The next few options are complete personal preference, you can set those however you wish to do so. Nvidia Reflex Low Latency I would recommend having set to on. For those of you on slightly lower end CPUs or older systems, go with on plus boost. Once all of that's set up, go to the bottom to apply. We'll then navigate up towards the top to the quality settings. Once inside of the quality tab, we're going to be tackling all of the in-game graphics options. Once we've set up the graphics options for our personal preference and to improve performance, we will then be utilizing an upscaling method which we'll be going over after the graphics settings. So for now, we're going to be ignoring most of these settings towards the top. Start by navigating down to the VRAM scale target and set this to 90%. If you do experience choppy FPS or lag spikes, try setting this down to 70. We now have a new option available to us, which is variable rate shading. I would 100% recommend switching this on as this will lower the quality and resolution of the game in areas outside of your immediate vision, which could be a decent quality uplift with minimal visual loss. Next up is texture resolution. You're going to want to set this to match your system specs. If you're on a high end to super high end system, go with high. If you're on a medium end system, go with normal or if you're on an older laptop or desktop, go with either very low or low. Texture filter anisotropic, I would set to normal. Depth of field, off. Detail quality level, again is going to be set to match your system specs. Low end system, go with low. Medium end system, go with normal. Or high end system, go with high. If you're looking for a small FPS boost on high end systems, you could also go with normal. Particle resolution is going to be set to very low. Bullet impacts for the sake of cleaning up the image, off. Persistent effects, off. Shader quality, we're going to be setting to low. On demand texture streaming, we're going to be switching off. Local texture streaming quality is going to be left at normal. Unless you're on a low end system or looking for the absolute best FPS possible, this will lower the visual quality of the game, but will give a small FPS boost. Shadow quality, we're going to be setting to very low. Unless you want a small visual bump, then go with normal. Screen space shadows, we're going to be setting to off for a clearer image and more FPS. But if you prefer to have a slightly better looking game, leave this at low. Ambient occlusion is also going 
to be set to off for a cleaner image and better FPS. If you prefer a nicer looking game, set this to static objects. Screen space reflections is going to be set to off for the absolute best FPS possible and it's my recommendation. Unless you like a better looking game, go with normal. Static reflection quality, low. Environment, tessellation is going to be set to off. Terrain memory is going to be set to medium. Volumetric quality is going to be set to low. Differed physics quality, off. Weather grid volumes is going to be set to low unless you are looking for the absolute best FPS possible. With really competitive settings, you would go with off. Water quality is going to be left at default. Navigate to the bottom and select apply. Once completed, head up to view at the top. FOV is completely personal preference. I would recommend setting a higher FOV though because you will get an advantage. ADS field of view, again, is personal preference, but I do have this set to affected. Weapon and vehicle field of view are complete personal preference and change the location of the gun on your screen. World motion blur off, weapon motion blur off, film grain I would set to zero, first person camera movement I like to set this to 50% and you can also change the color of flashbangs you can set this to make your screen darker rather than lighter. Navigate down to the bottom and select apply. At that point all of the base settings are set but we're not finished with all of the optimizations. We can then go ahead and apply our upscaling method to get a drastic FPS boost. Head to the graphic settings once again, head over to quality and go to the top. There are three different upscaling methods I would recommend. For those of you on Nvidia RTX based GPUs you can make use of Nvidia's DLSS. If you don't have have DLSS support on your GPU, then I would recommend utilizing AMD's FSR 2.1. If DLSS and or FSR 2.1 are slightly too blurry for you when you set them on your display and you're not too much of a fan of how they look, the alternative third option is to scroll down to the bottom and enable Fidelity CAS, set the sharpen strength all the way up to 100%. Then to get an FPS improvement, we can manually adjust the render resolution to something lower than 100%. Whether you're utilizing DLSS or FSR 2.1, the settings are the same. Enable the option, go to show more and start by utilizing the balanced preset. Apply that to your game, boot back in and see if you're happy with the game visually. If you are, navigate back over to the preset, then try out the performance mode and keep lowering this until you're no longer happy with the visuals or if you don't see much of an FPS improvement. If you're deciding to go with the Fidelity CAS option, which I personally use on my 4K display, set Fidelity CAS, Go to show more, set this to 100% sharpen, then go up to your render resolution. Set this down to 90%, apply this. Play for about 30 seconds to a minute. If you're happy with how the game looks, go back to the render resolution, lower this by another 10% down to 80. Keep lowering the render resolution until you're no longer happy with the game visually, then increase it back to where you are comfortable. Both DLSS and FSR 2.1 are great technologies within the side of the game, and for most people, they will serve their purpose. But if you're like me and prefer a sharper looking game, the Fidelity CAS option and adjusting render resolution yourself is definitely the way to go. Once you've applied the upscaling method to your game, we're practically done. However, for those of you looking for further optimizations to get more FPS out of your system, for those of you utilizing NVIDIA RTX 30 or 40 series GPUs, you want to make sure that resizable bar has been enabled. Modern Warfare 3 actually has base level optimizations if resizable bar support has been detected and enabled on your system, and you could be missing out anywhere from 5 to 15% performance across the board if you haven't manually enabled resizable bar yourself. You'll first of all need to make sure that it's been enabled in the BIOS, that your GPU supports it, you'll then need to make use of NVIDIA Profile Inspector to manually enable resizable bar for Modern Warfare 3 as NVIDIA doesn't yet officially support it, but you can force it on and get all of the benefits from it. Please do check out the guide which is linked in the description down below. It only takes a few minutes and it's definitely worthwhile. For those of you on AMD Radeon GPUs, right click on the desktop and enter the Radeon control panel. Inside of here, head up to the game section. You'll want to enable AMD's anti-lag and for those of you utilizing an RX 7000 series GPU, you may also see the option for anti-lag plus. Enable both options if they're available. Once all of the optimizations have been set for your PC, all you'll then need to do is navigate back inside of the in-game settings and last but not least, navigate over to the shader cache installation section found here and select this. If it does not start automatically in the top left hand side, restart the game, press the button again. Once the shader optimization starts, please do not change any settings, tab out or go through any of the menus and wait for this to complete. This is an essential step after optimizing the game because we have changed around quite a few settings and we need to make sure that they are applied properly to the built shader cache, which will be accomplished after this is completed. Once done, you're good to go and enjoy your optimized game. And there you guys have it. Let me know of your results in that comment section down below. If you happen to have any other tips or tricks or would like to share any information, let us know in the comments. And if you are serious about getting the most out of your PC and not sure where to go next, check out the playlist section in the comment section down below so you can target optimizations towards your GPU, CPU, Windows, or other specific games. Or if you're not entirely sure where to go next, check out one of the two videos on screen now and I'll see you guys over there.